previously on the Skip and Josh Sports Show. I don't know if you know that next year for baseball, every single voter has to make their votes public. That's good, because then there's going to be shaming. Exactly. Yeah, shaming exactly. is powerful. You're listening to the Skip and Josh Sports Show. Skip. Hey. How's it going? Very good. How are you? I'm good. Normally, we don't start the show talking about college basketball, but because March is starting next week, I'd like to uh, talk about college basketball first, if that's okay with you. I think it's great. You know, February is like a tough month. You know, once the NFL season ends, um, there's much less going on in the sports world. We've just come off a few weeks of all-star games, you know, in the NHL and the NBA. So, like, that's like dead zone completely. I'm so, glad you said games after All-Star. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know I mentioned to you that you had a What Bugs Me from a few weeks ago about people calling the All-Star games All-Star. Welcome yeah. to All-Star. And yeah. I was I was like, I was actually skeptical about it. I, I trusted you completely because I know you're not, obviously you're not making stuff up. And if something's bugging you, it's legit. But I I'd never actually heard it myself. And then this week, like just at the NBA, around the time of the NBA All-Star game, I saw like on TV, welcome to All-Star 2017. I was like, what the hell is this? Mm. Yeah, I was like, this is ridiculous. Anyways, back to college basketball. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know if you got to watch any basketball, but Wednesday, it's funny. It seems like Wednesdays are like the most important sports days of the week lately. Remember in December or January, we had that crazy Wednesday where Duke was playing and the Canadians were playing and Team Canada was playing. Right. And we could have done a whole episode just on that day. Yeah. Well, this past Wednesday, um, there were a lot of exciting college basketball games. For starters, um, Butler upset Villanova. Huge. That's like the first time Butler, Villanova's lost at home in years. Yeah, 74 to 66. And I mean, Butler's not exactly a bad team, but they're not exactly Villanova either. No, right. Um, and then that same night, well, Kansas beat TCU. No, not really a surprise. Oregon was playing California. Um, and it was on the road. Oregon was on the road. And Oregon was down by, I think, 10 points with about two and a half minutes to go in that game. And they hit three consecutive three pointers. And they ended up winning the game in regulation time, 68-65. And there are three Canadian players on that team that accounted for like 85% of their points. Yeah, I know. Their two best players are returning players. And they're both Canadian. They're, Oregon is, look, they're number six in the country for a reason. And they are legit. Like, they are a legit contender. I wouldn't count them out. I mean, you know as well as I do, anybody could beat anybody. Exactly. It's a wild year in college basketball. It is. And then there was a great ACC matchup not involving Duke. It was, uh, well, there were two. One was and one wasn't. Um, so North Carolina played Louisville, and it was at Chapel Hill, and, and they beat Louisville, which, I mean, not exactly an upset, but Louisville is actually ranked higher than North Carolina, or at least they were going into that game. Right. But home court's huge, right? Yeah. And then and then I haven't even talked about the two buzzer beaters that night. Um, firstly, there was uh, Providence beat Creighton, which is also an upset, Yeah. Um, on, I think it was a last second buzzer beater. And, um, and then, of course, I'm saving the best for last. Or, or the maybe, worst. Or yeah. the worst, right, um, where Duke lost to Syracuse in Syracuse, also on a buzzer beater, where uh, Duke actually was a tie game, and Duke had the ball with, I think, about 10 seconds left in the game. It was or, a terrible possession. We had um, a terrible it, it, offensive possession. Luke Kennard didn't get a good shot off, and yeah. Grayson Allen wasn't having a good game, so the ball was given to Luke Kennard, which is fine. I have no problem with that. He didn't get a good shot off, and then uh, Syracuse got the rebound, didn't call a timeout, didn't give Duke a chance to set up, and Gillian just takes the ball to basically not even the three-point line. He just heaved it up. Yeah, and it hits the backboard and it goes in. It Crazy. was like such a lucky shot. I really didn't like the last possession. I don't mind, like you said, I love the ball to go into Kennard. I told you last week, I think everything he shoots is going in. But I didn't like it that he shot with like time left on the clock. It, 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 You know, you have the last shot. You can't give the other team another chance. You have to try to shoot with like two seconds left, just enough time for you to get an offensive rebound and... And that's it, you know. So he, he, we shot a little bit too early, especially. It was a terrible shot, you know. Like it wasn't a good shot. 
I mean, I wonder because they were scrambling and his and his back was to the net at one point. He yeah. may not have known how much time was left on the shot clock or on the game clock for that sure matter. Sure enough, yeah. So so he was probably just thinking, I just got to heave something up before the before the buzzer goes. That's a huge win for Syracuse. It might get them into the tournament. It might. Yeah, it, it probably will. It probably will. And it was a huge win. And you know what? I mean, obviously, I, I prefer when Duke wins. But uh, to lose to a, a team like that in the ACC um, on their court, uh, you know, I think Duke's record speaks for itself, and I'm not too concerned about uh, their tournament uh, seeding or anything like that. Well, I mean, look, they're, they're not going to be a one. We know that. No, they're, they're not. They're, they weren't going to be a one anyway. It's going to be a stretch, I think, for them to be a two. I agree. Um, so we're looking at like a three or four, and uh, it's fine. You yeah, know? with that loss, they probably went down to a four seed. But the thing is, they have. I think they have. They have three games. They have three games left plus right. the ACC tournament. Um, so a lot can change between now and March twelfth. Yeah, I'm I not mean, too concerned about if it. If you look at the top twenty-five, like, or the, the you know the overall rankings, like, you know, really really good teams are 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 gonna be five and six seeds. You know. Yeah, they're really. It's that's the thing. The there's a, there might be you know the top four might be. You know, on a li- on a league of their own, let's say in a league of their own. I don't even after- know about that. But... but then after that, there's a lot between the two seeds all the way down to like the six seeds. I don't know how much difference there is. You know. Well, like, look, if if you're like, you're in the tournament and and you know you're playing like Notre Dame, who might end up being like a six seed. Like, I wouldn't feel comfortable playing them at all. Like, the- they could beat anybody. Same thing with Butler. Same thing with Florida State. I mean, Virginia's on a crazy slide right now. You know, they're going to end up being seated a little bit lower, too. But they, you know, they they defend better than anybody in the country, pretty much. So, like, I don't know. Like, I think it's going to be a wild uh, tournament this year where it, kind of anything's going to go. So, Yeah. And then we only talked about Wednesday. So then on Thursday, um, there were three top seeded teams playing. Gonzaga destroyed San Diego 96 to 38. I've never seen such a lopsided score <laughs> in in years, I think. Right. Um and that's and that's you know we we t- we discussed that last episode where Gonzaga isn't playing any strong opponents and so I don't know how prepared they're going to be for the tournament. But at least if the opponents they are playing they're blowing them out, which is course, like what they have right. to do, right? And and they should be and they should be. I mean They're going to be a one. They're going to be a one seed. Um, whether they, they're going to be, be the, the number be the, one the, one the is another number story. one seed. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, if they don't lose, really, the, the committee can't knock them down because they've won every game they're supposed to win. Right. Um, I mean, 58 points margin of victory, that's their biggest margin this season. So, yeah. Then uh, two um, Pac-12 games, Arizona defeated USC and uh, UCLA defeated Arizona State. So, um so the Pac-12 is actually an underrated conference, if you ask me. Well, Oregon, UCLA, Arizona, you know, that's that's legit, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, and I, and I don't know if anyone from the Pac-12 is going to be a one seed in the tourney, um, but certainly if they're not, they'll be... It's going to be hard because, so, like, if you work under the assumption that Gonzaga is going to be a one, right? And then let let's say let's say Villanova and Kansas are also ones, right? Right. right. So that leaves one more team. So right. you're talking about like one team from the Pac-12, Arizona, UCLA, Oregon. But then what about the ACC, the cut toughest conference in the country? Yeah. Right. I mean, like, what about you know North Carolina, or Louisville? I mean, we already talked about Duke, but you know, like, it it would be strange, you know. I mean, the ACC is so loaded. I mean, of course, their overall records are not going to be as good because they're they're just beating up on each other. All those mm. teams, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. I still think Kansas is the best team in the country, and uh, you know, they're going to be tough to get out of the tournament. One other thing, I was watching. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the Duke game on Wednesday because um, one of the television providers in this country decided to put some UFC special on instead of the Duke game, which was quite frustrating. <laughs> um, but they did, they did put on the, uh, the Oregon-California game. It was uh, Dave Pash and Bill Walton were doing that game for ESPN. Now, obviously, you know who Bill Walton is. I don't know if you've seen any games that he's done recently. Not really, no. 
I think I think he's lost it. I honestly think Bill Walton has lost it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going around the internet lately that you see on Facebook and social media, just making fun of Bill Walton and like. Well, you should have heard some of the things he was saying during the game. First of all, at one point they were showing like normally you just hear the guys doing the commentary. You don't actually see them. Right. Um, but the camera was on them, and they had the California mascot was right behind them. And Bill Walton was chatting with the mascot. Now, the mascot obviously wasn't answering because mascots don't talk. But he was trying to have like a normal conversation with the mascot. It was the strangest thing. And then Dave Pash, who's a credible um, play-by-play guy, yeah. was asking Bill Walton some legitimate questions when there was like a lull during the game. He was asking him, so what do you think of the Boogie Cousins trade in the NBA? And Walton was just like sort of blowing him off. I don't want to talk about that. Who cares about Boogie Cousins? I'm just glad he wasn't traded to any of the teams I like. <laughs> he's he just avoiding the subject. I mean, <laughs> it was the weirdest thing to see. It is funny. I'll tell you something about Bill Walton. So I do work with a guy that used to work for the NBA. He told me he once had to go do an interview at Bill Walton's house. He told me Bill Walton is probably one of the nicest athletes he's ever met in his life. I believe that. Yeah, he's like, come in, make yourself at home. Like, he had access to his house. It was like he said he was honestly one of the nicest guys he's ever interviewed that I had to do an interview with. So, I believe that. But, you know, the drugs may have caught up with him at this point. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. I don't know. Hi there. Skip and Josh will be right back. To get in touch with them, you can send them an email to skipandjoshshow at gmail.com. You can follow them on Twitter at Skip and Josh, and you can visit their website at www.skipandjosh.com. And now back to the show. So here's what I wanted to ask you about the NBA All-Star Game. A few weeks ago, we talked on the show how neither of us were going to watch the NHL All-Star Game or the NFL Pro Bowl. So I did not watch the NBA All-Star Game. I don't know. I don't think you did, but my question is... It was on in my house because Matthew well, really wanted to watch it. Well, this, is, this was my question because the type of game that the NBA All-Star Game is appeals to people who are 15 and under, Yeah, which is your son. So I wanted to ask, did Matthew actually watch the NBA All-Star Game? He watched most of it. He was really, really excited to watch it. He started watching it at the beginning. I think a lot of the appeal of the game was the drama, basically, that the media... Uh, drummed up and maybe it was to get viewership which was the whole like Steve Kerr is coaching uh, the team with Westbrook and Durant on it and is he going to put Westbrook and Durant on at the floor at the same time so I think that was part of the appeal you know and then once that was over I mean I don't Matthew didn't last didn't watch the whole game to the end mostly because it's ridiculously boring you yeah, know? I mean, the, the scores, every year the scores get higher and higher. There's no defense played at all. And, and all the All-Star games are bad except for baseball, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I wasn't surprised that you didn't watch. There was I no just, defense. I wanted, I wanted to know if Matthew watched because I know he, he likes watched, basketball. He watched most of it, but he, even even he got bored of it. I mean, it's literally just like one alley-oop going one way, one alley-oop the other way, a dunk on this end, a three-pointer on this end. There's no defense whatsoever, right? So. Mm. Steve Kerr had a good idea um, saying that the um, they should each team should be playing for a charity. Mm -hmm. I heard and, that. And there should be a large sum of money going to um, the charity, to the charity that they're playing for, and that would hopefully make them actually try. Right? The, 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 they need some reason to make them try. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Or or just abolish it altogether. Oh, wow. That's a whole other story, but yeah. I mean, they're not going to do that. I mean, but probably not. No. By the way, since we since we touched on the NBA a little bit, I, I don't really follow the NBA, so we're not going to get too much into it unless you you have something you want to say. But um, remember when I was complaining last week about the NHL bye weeks, which yeah. I still don't, which I still don't like. But what's even worse than the NHL bye weeks is the NBA bye week because at least in the NHL every team has like a different bye week. So there's still games going on. But this week, the NBA gave a, a bye week to the whole league yeah, because, well, of their, because of their all-star break. And I mean, that's the worst thing you can do because now there's no games at all. There's no news at all. I mean, other than the trade deadline. It's like, why, what were they thinking when they agreed to that? I don't get it. It's funny because the, the all-star game finished and I was looking at the schedule to see, okay, when is the next game? I actually wanted to see when was going to be Serge Ibaka's first game with the Raptors and, you know, when are the Celtics playing, like the teams that I follow. And, and I was like, 
the next game is when? <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> you know? right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. what? I, I was I was in shock. But I guess that's what I mean. They they've planned it carefully around the All Star break and the trade deadline. But it the league it you kind of lose momentum, right? You want to you want to keep up the momentum from your All Star game. Absolutely. And and, and, and if and season. if they were going to do something like this, you know, do it during the NFL season when not many people are paying attention to the NBA. Don't do it now when no one's paying attention to anything. Like in the states, all there is right now is is college basketball and NBA. Yeah. You know, so you just shot yourself in the foot sort of by taking a week off at a time of year when you could have had the, the media all to yourself. I just want to talk, since we're talking about the trade deadline, mm. there's something that I wanted to mention. I was going to bring it up when you talked about your what bugs me, but uh, we can, I like now's a good time any, as any. Mm -hmm. So the trade deadline. <laughs> yeah. God. First of all, the NBA is the most fascinating league um, when it comes to trades because you always know about them before they happen, mm -hmm. right? The NBA is the biggest leaky faucet that there is, <laughs> right? You, you hear about trades like three days before, and then and then usually when you hear about them, they're real. Like it's not just rumors. Like there's insiders, and they come up, and they say so-and-so is going to get traded, and then he does. Mm. So what was interesting about this trade deadline is like no one really got traded. There was It was completely useless. Like there was like no real trades. Like all the big rumors – didn't happen there was no jimmy butler there was no paul george there was no you know the boogie cousins trade happened you know at the all-star game so that was right. like anticlimactic so basically you know look we don't get espn here so i don't know what they were doing on the trade deadline if they devoted a whole afternoon to having reporters hanging around talking about the potential trades but i mean there was really nothing to report so that brings me to the nhl trade deadline which oh. is which is coming up on um next wednesday, wednesday. of course wednesday okay. so the i mean as you know like the, the the sports network landscape in in our country is like pretty heated right mm -hmm. so you know like tsn has five tsns and sportsnet has five sportsnets and you know there's french language and and plus you know regular regular news like cbc and ctv and stuff like this mm -hmm. but i mean they there's like both networks are hyping up their trade deadline day special right with these video montages of past past trade deadlines and you know which like, is which is just really just men sitting at a desk yeah. talking but the best is both networks have the same kind of thing and one of them has has like we start the day with uh, breaking news, which is completely, I'm sure they've completely um, filmed that for the commercial. It's not something that actually happened because they never start the day with breaking news. They get on the air at nine o'clock in the morning and, and don't talk about anything for five hours. Because nothing happens. Yeah. So it, it, there's <laughs> nothing happens. So when I see these commercials, like every day I'm seeing the commercials and I'm just laughing my head off. I'm like, oh, my God, people are going to tune in. They're going to tune into the pre-trade trade deadline show and then the real trade deadline show. And then really most and of the trades the recap, are going to happen. And the recap oh, trade deadline God. show. Most of the trades are just going to happen in the last hour, if anything. I yeah. mean, there, there's honestly, there's not even any big guys out there. You know, there's no one of consequence you know like kevin shattenkirk is the biggest prize right? and i think he's already vetoed three trades okay, i heard give me a break you know matt duchene we've got through this ad nauseum you know i don't even think colorado is actually going to trade him and then who do you have you know patrick eaves i can't even ben, believe people ben are going to trade for patrick eaves this guy's a nobody ben bishop so ben bishop. here's what well, well tampa is going to have to decide what they're doing you know here's what i wanted to ask you speaking of um shattenkirk mm-hmm so he has a no trade clause, and I think he's vetoed three potential trades already. Yeah, and maybe one day we'll find out who those trades were to. I don't well, know. apparently he doesn't want to go to certain cities, right? Right. But here's my question. I have two questions, two completely separate questions. Number one, if a team wants to trade you, why would you want to stay with that team? I've always thought of that. It's like, why do you want to be around a situation where you know they don't want you? Yeah, I don't get it. Plus, they're in a playoff spot, St. Louis, so I don't know why they're so busy to try to dismantle their team. Well, this leads to my second question. If you have a good player like Kevin Shattenkirk or Matt Duchesne or Ben Bishop, why do you want to trade these players away? I get it. Okay, maybe he's going to be a free agent next year. So keep the guy on your team and try to re-sign him. Well, why, why do teams give away 
good value for nothing. I don't understand. Yeah, but look, if you're in last place and you're not going anywhere and you have a high priced veteran, of course you trade him for draft picks. Shattenkirk's not old. Exactly. And neither is Duchesne. There's nothing wrong with Shattenkirk. Yeah. Right? Like, okay, you want to trade Jerome Aguinla. I get it. Shattenkirk's 27. Duchesne's 26. Yeah. Landis Cog's 24. The, these guys are like, you could still build your team around them, you know? I just, there's some things I just never will understand yeah. or I will never understand. Oh, well. Well, that's the trade deadline. So we'll probably talk next episode after the trade deadline's finished and we'll go over like the winners and losers. The Skip and Josh Sports Show. They don't take your calls. Since we're on the, the topic of hockey, I wasn't going to really bring up hockey. Mm. Um, I heard something on one of the French sports networks this week, and I don't know because I only heard the end of it, so I don't know how accurate this is. Did the Canadians have some sort of open practice for the fans this week where Carey Price didn't show up? This is true, yes. So what happened? He just didn't show up? Well, they had this open practice. It was scheduled from a long time. It's a sponsored thing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, no, it's not that he didn't show up. It's a sponsored thing. Um, pan fans actually need tickets to go to watch it, and it's supposed to be one of these fun practices. It just so happened that it happened to be, you know, literally the day after Claude Julien took over. Right. Mm -hmm. So the timing was kind of crazy. What happened, what, what I heard is that Carrie Price had what they called like a therapy day. He was with like the physio or whatever, the trainers for most of the morning. And he didn't want to come out and skate on the ice. So halfway through the practice, he showed up and he he sat on the bench. Hmm. But I mean, yes, I know it's an open practice and the fans want to see the biggest star on the team. But at a certain point that. You know, the, I'm sure I don't think he didn't. I, it's I mean, anybody who's making a big deal out of this is kind of crazy. I mean, it's not like he he pulled a uh, Carmelo Anthony and left and didn't tell anybody where he is. Mm, you he know, was there he's there. The team knew what he was doing. He had obviously had permission to do it. Like, you know, he's 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 there, you know, like he just didn't get dressed and go on the ice and take shots. OK, whatever. Yeah. You know, the media in this town, it's nuts. Everybody wants to make a. Uh, FBI investigation about every little thing. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, this is the only city in the world, you know, you know some of the stupidity. You know, they had a reporter outside of Jose Theodore's house taking pictures of his house. Um, they had a guy sneaking into the hospital room taking a picture of Saku Koivu when he almost lost an eye. Yeah, I mean, that there, was smart. there's no, there's no, there's nothing that they won't do here, you know? It is pretty nuts. Yeah. Anyway, the Canadians are uh, in Toronto on Saturday to play the Leafs, and um, no one would have thought uh, months ago that this would be a really important game for the Canadians because well, the lead uh, in the standings has dwindled down to almost nothing. Well, I told you last episode it's 50-50 that they're going to make the playoffs, and I'm yeah. actually going to downgrade that to 30% chance of making the playoffs. You see, but I, you can't because you know everything is 50-50. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, I have last year's, last year's debacle so fresh in my mind and this is, it's literally like we're in a Groundhog Day situation. It's the same thing. It's history repeating itself. The only thing is the GM did something this year and changed the coach, but it's still the same players on the ice. And no one, literally, you know, they, they've been shut out four out of the last eight games. They can't, they can't score at all. You know, finally, actually, Price is playing fine now since they got rid of the coach. He's, the, the three games that he's played, he's playing well, just that they can't score. Right, which has been the problem for years, actually. Oh, that forever. They can't score. It's forever, forever. In fact, in fact, this year, um, the scoring's actually, I think, other than the last two weeks, the scoring's actually a little bit better than it's been the last couple of years. Most of the year, they've been one of the higher scoring teams, but a lot of that is based on their, you know, the first 20 games when they were crazy hot. Right. And, yeah. and, you know, when a team is crazy hot, that's not indicative of the team. And when the team's crazy bad, that's also not indicative of the team. Yeah. So speaking of that, Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, yes. Our, you know, our Philadelphia correspondent was saying how good the Flyers were when we had him on the show months ago. Yeah. So it was back at like after maybe the first 20 games and the Flyers were on a seven or eight game winning streak. And um, I didn't even realize it. And I told him, oh, the Flyers are kind of underwhelming. And he kind of took offense mm -hmm. and he wasn't too happy with me. So um, Mark was actually in Montreal this week and I went to a sports bar and we watched the Flyers Capitals game on Wednesday night. Interesting. And... Um, Boy, oh boy, the Flyers are bad. <laughs> He's He told me how bad they are. <laughs> and he pointed out that all their top players are minus 20 in the plus minus. So like Giroud's minus 20, Voracek's minus 20, Shen's minus 20. They're all minus 20. 
you know, which mm. is quite pathetic. Well, the um, team itself has given up 28 more goals than they've scored. Yeah, so he's like, he, he, he wishes they would just get rid of all the veterans, including Giroud, and completely go with the young players. I'll w- take Giroud. Which is what they may do at the trade deadline, you know. The fact is, I think they, it's, it's interesting that literally like one game could make a difference, right? Because we're heading into that trade deadline on Wednesday, mm-hmm. and teams are going to have to decide by then. On Wednesday, they're going to decide. On Wednesday. They're going to decide, are they buyers or sellers? sellers? So are the Flyers right there, are they buyers or sellers? Buffalo, Tampa. I mean, Tampa, I mean, they're going to have, they're hot lately, but they're going to have to make a decision. Are we buyers or sellers? You know? So anyways, he's not too happy with the Flyers. That's all I have to say. Check out the Skip and Josh Sports Show on Twitter. You know that little app with the little blue Tweety Bird? Yeah, you can follow them there at Skip and Josh. So, obviously, I watch the sports channels quite a bit here, and I keep seeing this commercial over and over and over again. It's a commercial for Walmart, which I don't even go to Walmart that often. I go every week. And, okay, so maybe you've seen this at the (laughs) store, but it's a commercial where they're advertising that they're selling CDs. So, this is odd for me for a couple of reasons, because, A, I don't know who still buys CDs anymore. That's number one. And number two... The CDs that they're selling, it's not like new releases. It's like old CDs that have been out for for 20 or 30 years or something. And all of them are $6.97, which, if you think about it, is not a bad deal. But on the other hand, who buys CDs? I could go online and get the music for that price or less. Yeah. So, so these commercials are just very confusing to me. I don't quite understand it. Now, I've thought of this. It's funny that you bring this up because I've thought of this many times. I've never seen the commercial that you're talking about. I have no idea what it is, but I have, I've, I've thought about the CD buying business for a while. Like, you know, HMV is closing up, right, in Canada? Yeah. So there's no more music stores. Like, where do you go and buy music? Well, apparently, I saw an article online that Walmart sells more CDs in Canada than any other store in the country. This makes sense to me. Well, first of all, anybody under the age of I don't know what doesn't buy CDs anymore. My kids don't even know what a CD... I mean, they know what a CD player is because we've had them in the cars. We've had them in our home when they were little. But we don't have one, currently have one now, right? And I bet you don't either. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. But if you do have it, you don't use it. A right? CD player? I just sold my CD yeah, player, we, actually. I mean, I have a box of 400 CDs in my storage room. Um, like, if I wanted to listen to them, I'd have to do it on a computer. Uh, <laughs> right? But I think that the actual population that buys CDs is the target audience of, is like the target demographic of Walmart. That could be but they're actually spending money to produce these commercials and put them on television. So the money that they're spending on the promotion, I don't even know if they're recouping it in sales. <laughs> Who knows? It's really quite crazy. It's it's really actually quite crazy, right? Like, like it's CDs by, by Journey and Sticks and stuff like that. That's the demographic. They're looking for 50-year-old 50, 50 and older. People that still have the old, their old CD players and they still listen to CDs because they haven't transitioned to the downloading world yet. That's who they're. That's who they're looking at. Okay. Well, then maybe I that, don't know that's what I think. Happens. I don't know. I'm not part of the Walmart, you know, uh, advertising team. But I mean, that's the way I see it. But, you know, like it's getting to the point where like there's soon going to be no more, right? I don't know if you watched the Grammys last week. No chance. Okay. Well, have you ever heard of Chance the Rapper? I have. Oh. Is he re- is he related to the weekend? <laughs> I don't think so, but he's a guy who I never, I I never, these these people have names that aren't actually names. They're just words in the dictionary. So Chance the Rapper is the first artist. um, Well, not the first artist, but some kind of weird stat, maybe the first Grammy nominated artist. I'm not sure um, who came out with streaming only. Okay. Right. So like, I'm surprised that hasn't been done before. You can't get his music on like, um, on a CD or like anything like that. And I don't even think you can get his album on like iTunes. I think it's only on like the streaming versions like Spotify or, or Apple music. Okay. Which is, I guess the next thing, right? I I mean, okay. Everything changes within like six minutes. So I know. who knows? Well, like right now, like the idea of downloading music, it doesn't exist anymore even that much. 
like the 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 way people buy their get their music is like monthly subscriptions right spotify apple music these kind of things right but then you 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 subscribe to a playlist and you don't know what you're going to get if you want to listen to a specific song no no you got to get this you got to get the spotify premium oh i see i didn't realize yeah which is what my daughter's been bugging me to get since since you brought this up um well you brought it up no no no, but about the spotify (laughs) and about the streaming service yeah um I have another question for you. I, I hear these commercials on um, on the Tony Kornheiser podcast mm-hmm. to subscribe to this uh, service where you can get all kinds of different podcasts, you know, news, sports, whatever, you know, entertainment. Yeah. Um, and, and like you pay a monthly subscription fee and you have access to all this different content. My question is, why would anyone pay for that when you can get all these podcasts for free? What's the commercial? I never heard it. He does. It's one of the reads that he does. Really? Yeah. Like, pay attention to. I don't. He doesn't do it every day. Are you like, sure it's like? Are you sure it's only? Are you sure it's like audio content? Maybe it's not like magazine style, like written. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure it's only audio content. I'm gonna pay attention next time. I mean, I half fall asleep when I listen to his reads. To be honest. Right. Right. So speaking of uh, the reads, how do you like your Harry's razor? You know what? I haven't actually used it yet. <laughs> I because I was still like I had a brand new blade that I was using yeah. when you when you got the uh, the Harry's razor for me. Yeah. So just to just to clarify for the fans out there, so I don't know. If, I mean, I mean, if you've listened to us, you know that we we are both fans of the Tony Kornheiser show, and the Harry's razors is one of their sponsors. So when I was in the states uh, in. Um, the Christmas time, I bought myself a Harry's razor and I bought one for Josh as well. <laughs> so you haven't nice used it yet? You. Yeah. Well, I mean, you told me that you shave twice a year with a razor. So it's not So it's going to last me a long time. It's going to last you about 12 to 15 years. <laughs> I actually shave once a week, not twice a year, but yeah. No, but you said with a blade. With a blade once a week, but only uh, my neck. I don't shave my face good. with the blade. Good I shave stuff. my face with uh, the electric uh, razor. I give the Harry's razor a thumbs up in case right. anybody wants to know. So I would endorse it. And if they want to be a sponsor of this show, we would happily take them as a sponsor. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is back. So I heard um, I heard through the grapevine that you have uh, something bugging you. You're kidding me? Boy, are you bugging me, man? I'm going to, when I get, I'm going to nail, ooh, ooh, God. I'm, I'm getting bugged now. Whoa, man. I do. I'm glad you asked. This happens every single year at this time of year. So you know, you, you know, you, you're going to know what I'm going to say as soon as I say the first word. A lot of times I do. As soon as you start to say something, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, as, as you are probably aware, if you've turned on your television at all this week, this is the week for the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Oh God. Now, I'm not exactly a curling fan, and I realize that there are a lot of curling fans in Canada, and I realize that the Scotties Tournament of Hearts could be the most important curling tournament of the year. I personally year. do not know one curling fan. Well, I actually happen to know one or two, but that's besides the point. Mm-hmm. So I understand that TSN gets a lot of ratings for this event, for this tournament, and so that's why they cover it from wall to wall, from beginning to end. What I don't understand is, and it, it doesn't just apply to curling, but it, it bugged me this week, and I'll tell you why. Can I guess? Uh, you, you, you already know. You don't have to guess. <laughs> like, why? If they have five TSN oh channels, oh my god, that's so true. Why? Why do they have to have the same thing on four of the five? I don't get that. It bugs the hell now, out of me. Now, normally it wouldn't really bother me so much, but it bothered me this week because four out of five days this week PTI was preempted. It just wasn't on. It wasn't on at all. Oh my god, that's a crisis for you. Well, I mean, that's the best show TSN's got. Yeah. And, and, and they just refute, like, okay, so you, I get it. You know, TSN2, not as many households have TSN2, so fine. You don't want to put the curling on TSN2. I get it. I know, but, a but one out of the five TSNs should have something different, right? Right. And so on Thursday, TSN did put PTI on TSN2. So if they were able to do that on Thursday, why weren't they able to do it the rest of the week? <laughs> I actually, by the way, I did send an email to audience relations at TSN. Did they answer you? They have not answered me. I should have tweeted at them. They might have answered quicker. But I, I just asked and I said, look, I get that curling's important. I get that it's, you know, garners a lot of viewers. 
but why does the same thing have to be on four of the five channels? Isn't the whole idea of having five channels so that you can put different things on? Yeah, I mean, I understand when you turn on at nine o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, whatever, even up all the way up till noon, even most of the day, if everything's the same stuff on, because there's not there's no live events on, right? So if they have Sports Center on in a loop, you know, from all morning, that's fine. But at a certain point, you need to have, there's no point in having all those different channels, right? There really isn't. Oh, God, the curling. It Rick makes me crazy when, the, when I see the curling. So that's what's bugging me today. I'm numb to the curling. I don't even look at it. <laughs> I actually don't really completely understand how it works. I curled once. In in, in uh, CJEP? I think so, yeah. And then uh, once again, uh, just like five years ago or so. Everyone that I've talked to that's ever done curling says it's really fun. It's not bad. I mean, I'm not good at it, but. Yeah, but whatever. So speaking of um, TSN, mm. um, did I read yesterday that Jay and Dan are going to have their show canceled on Fox Sports 1. Oh, I didn't know that. And, the, well, I think the show that's is canceled bad. already or it's imminent. There was a report that it's going to be canceled. And that they were not going to have their contract renewed. So um, it's kind of interesting to see what will happen to these guys, right? Are they just going to go back to Canada and try to get their old jobs back at TSN? Because I'm sure some people at TSN are not going to be happy. I mean, like right now, Kate and Natasha are like the number one duo, right? Well, or Sportsnet might make a play for them. Maybe they will. But I think their heart is still with TSN. Although, like we always say, money talks, right? So, yeah, that would be huge for Sportsnet. And then the other thing is, like, there's such a backlash because people, so many people are mad because Jay and Dan are really well liked, even by American viewers. And um, they so spend, they, might, they might go to ESPN. There's a war right now between Fox Sports and ESPN, right? Because um, Fox stole away a couple of what, you know, they think are talented people. Like, I, I wouldn't call him talented, is Skip Bayless. Right. Colin so, Coward. yeah, I mean, Colin Coward also not my biggest cup of tea, although I respect what Colin Coward does because he goes on for hours and hours and he's he's he doesn't have a co-host or anybody or guests. He just talks him alone by himself. And that so, guy, uh, his nickname is Big Sexy. He doesn't like Canadians. I forget his name. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Whitlock. That's it. Yes. Yeah. So they so Fox has stolen away like a few people. I mean. They paid Skip Bayless like a small fortune to come to Fox. And I mean, look, I'll tell you one thing about Skip Bayless. I followed him on Twitter because I liked the I, I found the um, his show with Stephen A. Smith um, amusing. But I, at a certain point this year during the NFL season, I actually had to unfollow him from Twitter. I couldn't handle him anymore. Because well, they also they also stole the name of our show for their show there. They, they did. The hundred percent they did, and I hope we're getting some benefit when people start to look for the skip, right? So yeah, they exactly. type in, you type in the skip, and you see the skip and Shannon undisputed. So hopefully we're going to get some listeners just from, you know, I would hope so. bad typing. <laughs> so, but I don't know. We'll see what happens with Jane Dan, ESPN, TSN, Sportsnet. Maybe they maybe they pack it in. I don't know how much they like their lives in LA. Maybe they like it so much that they're going to want to stay or they're going to want to come back home. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'd love to live in California. No, that's that's nonsense. I would love it. Really, I would. You should do it then. I'm, I Just mean, pack what, it up and go. What, what do I need snow and cold and winter for? I don't need any of that. Yeah, but but Los Angeles, that's mental. mental. That's a crazy place. You can't live there. Uh, whatever. It doesn't have to be Los Angeles. It could be San Diego. It could be San Francisco. Yeah, maybe. yeah. San Diego, I would fully endorse. San Diego, the, weather's, the weather there is beautiful every single day of the year. It's identical. A couple of years ago, I went to San Diego and it was like March here and we still had snow on the ground and it was cold. I get off the plane. I, I'm like in the taxi and I'm like, what the hell? Why don't I live here? <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm here. like, why doesn't everybody live here? It's I don't this understand. Is heaven on earth. You know, I don't understand why the Chargers are leaving. I don't get it. Someone that I work with is, a, you know, lives in San Diego and uh he said there's a huge backlash right now in San Diego. People are very, very upset about the Chargers leaving. And that owner is basically like persona non grata in the city, right? Like he can't come back to San Diego anymore. They're going to, he's, he's in big trouble. Like, and 
everyone's hoping that it's going to be a huge failure in Los Angeles because they wish nothing but bad on uh, the new, on the ownership. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, if I live there, it's the same when the Expos left here. I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So it goes. Like you always say, there's always the, the answer to every question. Money. Money. All right. Well, good talking to you. Nice show. Yeah. And um, we'll chat again next week. Excellent. All right. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is over now. Don't worry. There'll be another episode soon.